Dukes and welcome to the first episode of the season of The Cauldron. We are here at Steeltown Coffee in Port Talbot and joining me for this first episode is former Wales international Lynn Jones and former Neath player and manager at some point as well and of course head coach of Aberavon, Jason Hyatt. Welcome both, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thanks Gab, it's a pleasure. Well, this episode is all going to be about an important fixture due to come on the 2nd of September. It's been four years in the making now since the last time Neath and Aberavon faced each other. It's the derby. So I'm going to start with you. Firstly, how excited are you for it to be back? Yeah, it's really exciting. It's, uh, it's fantastic to lock horns again with, with Neath. You know, we're bitter rivals over the years and a lot of history and uh, an emotion attached to the fixture. It means a lot to everyone, players, club supporters so when we seen the fixtures come out and we were dealt neath at home in uh, in the first fixture it just added that uh, that little buzz going forward through summer that was yeah it, it is an important fixture we both need it we need to feed off each other as neath and Aberavon, and uh, we've, we've missed each other sadly badly uh, to be honest and uh, uh, the interest rises when uh, people from our supporters from respective clubs when we get together and uh, uh, really looking forward, and what I really like is on the first game of the of the season. That's really important. You know, always growing up, you played Aber on a Boxing Day, and it always rained. It was always muddy, and you really didn't get a a really great game as we should have. But now it's in the dry uh, of September and down the Tolbert Athletic. Yahoo! And that's what I was going to ask you. Actually, you both have had experiences playing you know, in the derby. You know what it's been like. But Lynn, particularly for you. What do you remember about those times when you were playing and perhaps managing as well? Um, you know, the, and, and of course your father played for Aberavon as well, 100 tries S- to Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you remember growing up watching those derbies? Well, I certainly don't remember my father playing. I was only <laughs> just a twinkle in his eye <laughs> at, at the time. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, as I said, the, uh, the, the weather wasn't great and uh, not drinking alcohol on Christmas Day was always a downer. Uh, and it's always difficult to uh, to get that quality of game that I really wanted. Different to Easter. Easter was great. It was dry, and the game would open up. And as you said, uh, you know, it's it's such a, a, an honour for me to come here. And uh, my, my father played, uh, I don't know, what, 13 years for for Aberavon in total, and has got a lot of tries, etc. And uh, uh, it was always interesting when I actually went then to uh, to Neath to play, listening to people talk about the old days and uh, the filth, the dirtiness, the rivalry and the friendships that they all made with each other and the respect. And uh, I'm sure Jason will uh, go further on, on that subject just now. But you know what? There was a huge period during the, the 70s where Neath didn't win a game for 24 games. And then all of a sudden that stopped and then Neath won a game. Abraham didn't win a game for 24 games. It's an incredible record. And you know what? Abraham have been up high on top for the last 10 years or so compared to Neath. And now Neath are back in that division and there's a chance for them to, to catch up again and follow the good example that Abraham have done on how to run a rugby club in, in today's society. And Abraham were the last ones to win the Starby. And would you agree like the, the shifting results over the years have been but up and down for both teams, I suppose? Yeah, rugby moves at a, a tremendous pace. Lynn's been involved at the international level and at the highest level, and it, it changes at every level, you know. And uh, we've been very fortunate in Aberavon. We've had uh, we've had some real good success. You know, we've made the cup final, we've uh, made a league final, and um, you know we've got aspirations to, to just get better year on year. But the the Neath Aberavon game is a special game. I've been fortunate enough, as has Lynn, to play in those games. I've played in other derbies, uh, but nothing quite simulates the Neath Aberavon game and Lynn said the the only emotion that goes behind it you know means a tremendous amount to everyone and they are really really special games I, I really enjoy listening to the crowd shouting things on not often very supportive of me but <laughs> as a player uh, but it, it really enhances the uh, the rivalry and it means so much to, to people you know for their for their hometown to to win rugby there's two games that stand out for me uh, it was the semi-final of the Welsh Cup back in 1984 and Aberavon were hot favourites, I can tell you. They're a great team. They had Alan Martin, Adrian Owen, and uh, uh, Mike Edwards. It goes on and on uh, of, of all the great players that Aberavon had at the time. And they were hot favourites. We had no chance. We had no chance to win. And you know what? Every dog has his day. It was a perfect storm for Neath. And we won 12-3 and went through to the final. 
uh, of that. And when I was uh, growing up and became the age of 18, 19, I was training with Abraham, hopefully wanting to become a first-class player simultaneously. I was invited over to Neath as well, and so I was training with both clubs, and there was a cup game coming up in 1982, uh, 83, something like that. And uh, uh, having trained with both clubs, Abraham was streets ahead uh, in preparation and quality, but you know what? Neath went down to Aberavon and won a game in the Cup. And Mike Lewis went bonkers as an outsider, fighting with the crowd, as Mike did. Uh, but uh, great times, uh, great times. And it's so important. And uh, anyway, uh, it's, move on. And you're speaking there about you know, the impact of the crowd that came to support those derbies. How much does it mean to both towns you know, to, to come and support the teams um, and, I guess, be a part of such a special occasion? It's, it's huge. Uh, the Premiership takes a kick in from all shapes and sizes at the moment. And, uh, you know, I remember the last derby we played in Neath, they had to uh, put back the kickoff time to get the crowd in. And no doubt this is a five o'clock kickoff, so it allows all the local teams in Neath to finish their game and come and watch, and the same in Aberavon. Um, you know, there's another local derby between the Stars and the Quins taking place the same day. So hopefully we'll attract a big crowd and the players thrive off that. And as Lynn said, you know, the, the, the crowd, there's a lot of rivalry between the two. When I, I, I was surprised when I first came to Aberavon and played against Neath quite what that rivalry is like. But it's, uh, you know, you thrive off it. It's good for the players and uh, it's good for the soul. It's so important, these games, not just to, to have them uh, two towns two, so close together playing, but having the clubs playing so, so, such good rugby, it's, it's no good one team winning by 20 points. We want to see really tight games of rugby. And uh, growing up into these fixtures, I couldn't get over how dirty a team Aberavon were. Well, we in Neath were trying to play football, you know, lovely pure rugby, and Aberavon were trying to drag us down. Jesse, you must be... <laughs> <laughs> it's the other way around now, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my first game, and Lynn was coaching for Neath. Uh, if you know, in the cup, do you remember he came over? It was before, oh. before pro rugby, and the first game was called off because of the weather, and the second game took place in Aberavon. <laughs> and the coach then at the time, Lynn would know him well, Chris O'Callaghan, called a meeting with the forwards on the Thursday before the game. And, uh, and basically said, if it doesn't all kick off in the first scrum, you'll all have your P45s on the Monday. <laughs> so I, I, I was hooking for Neath, at, uh, sorry, for Aberavon, and uh, Mevin Davis was hooking. And Mev's a good mate of mine. I like Mev, you know, I played against him when, his, when he was in Dunvant and I was in Monaloid. So I, I, I go back a long way with Mev and I was all week trying to rack my brains how it would sort of kick off. And as it happens, Neath kicked off, but the ball didn't go 10 metres, so it started with a scrum. So it did actually, I, I kicked it off in the nicest way I could against Mev. And I was actually, I got yellow carded. I was in the stand before the Aberavon subs sat down. So <laughs> I remember yeah. that. Yeah. So we, 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 I think Shane Williams scored, scored in the corner to seal the game, you know. But, uh, you know, again, going back, as Lynn said earlier, it's uh, form goes out the window a little bit and it's a local derby and, and everyone understands that. Neath were hot favourites to tump us that night and it was a close game. Yeah, but, uh, that's right, know, yeah. Just, the old times. That's why right. Shane Williams is overrated, wasn't he? <laughs> he overrated as a player. Yeah. Well, as it, like you were saying, I suppose anything can happen on the 2nd of September. And it's been four years since the last one. So how were you expecting it to go? It's obviously Neath to come up from the Championship. And uh, the Championship is very different rugby to the Premiership. Um, but again, you know, we, we've pre prepared for not just Neath, we've prepared for the first game really well. We've gone through pre-season friendlies. We've trained really hard. You know, it's been very physical in training and the boys have worked really, really, really well. Well, that's crap, isn't it? Jason was just saying before we come on here how <laughs> confident he was that we were going to win. And thump Neath, I can't believe he's changed tack now and given all that flat bat rubbish. Lynn, Lynn is trying now to create uh, something for the Neath players to look at, Aberavon are going to win. I, 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 I'm looking at the camera and say, I understand these games and whoever plays the best will win on that day. Trust me, that's what it comes down to. Whoever's the luckiest and the most disciplined. Unlike having yellow cards in the first minute. How bad is that? <laughs> yeah. Those are old days. Those are, you know, those are bygone days and Lynn was no angel himself when he was playing. I remember playing against him. But uh, I, I think on that, on that day, it comes down to and it's good for the, we talk about development, you know, and a lot of people hide behind the word development. Now it's all, it's, it seems to be the buzzword. Development is learning how to win. 
It's learning how to manage yourself in those high tense situations. You know, it could go down to the last five minutes. You know, you could be behind and chasing the game. But as a young player, those are the games you, you learn a lot about yourself in and you develop those layers because when you hopefully go into pro rugby, as some of our youngsters will and have, and Jack Morgan at the moment yeah. is, is, is going in as the Welsh captain into the World Cup. So, you know, he, he, he's played in those games um, and, you know, he's, he's, he's developed those, those layers and, and they'll serve him well, and, as they will with the other boys. Yeah, well, my, my father, Peter, uh, played for Aberavon from uh, 1954, believe it or not, till about 66, 67, when Omri Jones uh, came in and uh, took his place uh, from there on in. But throughout that career, he managed to play for an Ethan Aberavon combined against New Zealand and Australia as well in separate times. And uh, and whenever they lost, they always blamed the Neath players. Uh, they weren't good enough, but he, you know, I, that's why I didn't uh, join Aberavon. But it's clear that, the, that these derbies are such a, such special occasions. But how would you see them going in the future? How there's a lot of potential for all these derbies, as we've seen over the years, for you know the support from the towns and like mentioned development of the players. How would you see them going forward? Well, there's a lot of change coming in Welsh rugby. You know, we talk about the Super Ten or whatever that's going to look like, um, and I, I really hope there's a place for for everyone in that, especially Neath and, and Aberavon. You know, they. they uh, the good fixtures, the good games, and uh, as Lynn said, or alluded to earlier, Aberavon, it's a different place now. The pitch used to be heavy. I remember playing there myself when it was heavy. The pitch is pristine now. It's one of the best pitches within Wales. You know, we only train on there on a Thursday. So, you know, we're very proud of the surface we play on and the type of rugby we play, and you've got to have the right surface to play that sort of rugby. So I think if uh, if Neath turn up on a second, went into, went into play, then... What, what, a, what a surface to play on, you know, there are no excuses. It, it'll be really nice to see a, a good open game of rugby. How it's going to look in the future, out of our control. I think moving forward into the future, as, as Jason alluded to, there's a big game between the Quins and the Green Stars going on in town simultaneously. That could easily be brought forward into a, a, a curtain raiser for the Neath Harbour Avon fixture just after and have a double header at the Talbot Athletic. Uh, it would be very positive for everybody to, uh, to, to, to come together and, and create a bigger crowd and have a better day, be, better day out. And uh, uh, I certainly go along and, uh, and look forward to going into the clubhouse. If I take a right, that's where Ivor Harris, the old physio, used to sit. And then Dio uh, took over and that little seat there, they, I think they used to rent it out. Uh, but there's always a great welcome at the Tulbo Athletic Rugby Club for, for everybody. Is, uh, it's always a good night. And there's, there's nothing better I enjoy than going around looking at the old photographs, all the characters, all the people I used to know before they've passed away. And uh, you know what? We're only here for a short time. Let's make the game better. I do the same when I go to the Knoll. Uh, they got a great library in the, in the lounge as you go in and all the old players there. I had a I was lucky enough to play a, a couple of short games for Neath when I was 18, 19. And uh, I, I was with a couple of players at Gareth Llewellyn and John Davis, you know, and Neath at that time were by far the best team in Britain. You know, if there was a European Cup then, they would have won it. Um, and it's, it's lovely to go in the club, have a good welcome there uh, and, and look around the photos. You know, it's the proper rugby clubs where you can go around, you can see all the history there. You can spend uh, an hour or so looking at all the, the memorabilia in there. Uh, as Lynn said, real rugby clubs. Well, thank you both very much for chatting to me and going down memory lane. Um, and it's clear, you know, both clubs have such a rich history in Welsh rugby. So, you know, good luck to Aberavon and Neath, of course. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a fabulous day. First, back, it's first day in the season, you know, first game in four years uh, for the Derby. But just remember, 2nd of September, kickoff at 5pm at the Talbot Athletic Ground. I'm sure you won't want to miss it.